Hello and welcome to the second episode of Know Your Blood, Know Your Health. I remain your host, Uche Namadi, and I am with the amazing Dr. Adewoin, a consultant hematologist. Now, in the first episode, we talked about understanding blood groups and what's in your blood. In this episode, we'll be talking about blood groups, nutrition, and disease risks. Is there a link? Do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Synlab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. Over to you, Dr. Dewey. It was very interesting. I mean, the last episode. Yeah. <laughs> so this one seems like a bit more scientific. Okay. We shall be helped along the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'd like to start by asking if there is any scientific connection between blood groups and disease, disease risks like heart disease or malaria. Yes, there is. Um... Because I, I had... Um, I'm always falling sick or malaria yeah. or my blood group. Or <laughs> I have never understood the link. Yeah. So is there anything you can yeah. tell us about that? Yeah. Yeah. So there are what we call functional significance or clinical significance of, of blood group antigens. Hmm. And clearly, even from literature, there is relationship or link or association between blood group antigens and disease. Oh, wow. Um, so what that means is that some blood groups portend certain disease risk. Um, even look back to some few years back, COVID. There were mm. some blood groups that were associated with COVID wow. susceptibility and severity. You know, so there are literatures to back things like that. So uh, there are a handful of conditions like that, you know, where um, it's... Um, so in terms of risk, uh, we're either talking about severity. So some blood groups can portend more severity. Uh, for instance, malaria that you mentioned, mm. you know, so... And I think I can I can explain that you know hmm. to some reason. So okay. if you've got um, blood group O, it's the reason why it's said to be more common, because when you've got blood group O, it tends to protect you against severe malaria. So in what we call balanced polymorphism in 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 the in the medical literatures, there is a survival advantage that a particular gene that you have confers on you against a threat in your environment. That's the concept of balanced polymorphism. So, and that has been associated with malaria as well, mm. you know. So, people who have um, blood group O tend to have less severe malaria. They can have entry, but in terms of severity, they tend to have less severe malaria, which confers an advantage where we're seeing more persons in our climb with more blood group O. The same thing why the sickle cell gene is surviving is because it confers such an advantage. And mm. that's why the AS trait is still present in our population. So it's real that blood groups can confer that kind of um, advantage and you tend to see that you know, disease association. Even some cancers okay. tend to be associated, you know, gastric cancer, we're saying, oh yeah, blood group A person might have, you know, a slight propensity towards these cancers, you know, so clearly there's an association between blood group Interesting. and disease conditions. And blood group O. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, moving yeah. on. So there is this thing called blood type diet. Could you help explain to us what it is and yeah. does science support it? Yeah, so there is that um, theory that um, certain diets are more suited to certain blood groups. Um, but as of today, we don't clearly have a scientific rationale for that. Okay. Um, so I would... Are they like meats? I would rather say, you know, these are theories, but they lack scientific Backhand. evidence or okay. merit. Yeah. So, but these are things that you're going to hear, you know, um, hear about. But, you know, as much as medical literature is concerned, there is no sound scientific rationale for that. Okay. Uh, but certainly there are um, associations between our gene and then our diet. So there are certain genes that can that can um, uh, there are certain gene characteristic that can encourage us to focus more on certain kind of diet. You know, there's this um, um, nutrient genetics. There's also what okay. we call pharmacogenetics. That okay. um, based on your genetics, your individuality, there are certain drugs that you would find more useful 
and then there might be non-response to certain category of drugs. In fact, some people might even have hyper-response to certain category of drugs. Mm. So there are genetic associations, you know, that we can link to, but not the blood group phenotype. That if you are O, then you should eat certain food. If you are B, you should eat certain food. I wanted to ask you which one I should be eating now. <laughs> right. It lacks scientific merit, and it's oh, not wow. something that we can, we can beat our chest as physicians to say, no, this is the right diet based on your blood group. Huh. Okay, because the next question I'm about to ask will still toe that line because I was going to ask if blood group can influence how we react to certain foods. But as you said that there is no scientific backing. Yeah. But I'm just curious to know what are those myths? Have you heard anyone you could share like blood group O gravitate towards this type of meals and all that? I've, have you ever heard any? Yeah, I've heard it even on radio programs. I've heard it myself too, you know, so <laughs> so these things are, in fact, there was a time we used to trend a lot on social media uh, where every WhatsApp was carrying this, you know, uh, was carrying this, that, oh I yeah, yeah, this. No, I, I mean, this like two years ago, three years ago, I know this was really trending at the time, you know, and then I, I know that even medical associations came out to say no, you know, um, let the public beware. This is not, um, this hmm. is not, this lacks scientific merit and we are not a proponent of this. So um, it's a case of bias beware before you swallow it. You know? so, <laughs> so, bias beware. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so still on the myth line, are there common myths that people um, have about blood groups? I think the one I want to really, you know, hit is this concept of universal donors. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's a myth because in totality, there is no universal blood donor. Um, so the blood group O is said to be universal because um, there is lack of the A and the B antigens. So you can give to anyone. But there are people who have, they will call them dangerous O donors. Mm. Um, so they are O, but they've got immolysins. They've got antibodies that can destroy wow. A and B. So yes, they don't have the antigen on their red cells, but they've got antibodies that can destroy it in other people. And these antibodies can wreck a lot of destruction. You know, so... That's scary. So yeah, so in totality, um, an O person being a universal, you know, donor is not foolproof. Yes. Uh, the experiments in the lab that still has to go into that to check that, yes, indeed, this is a safe donor. We call it hemolysin test, mm. you know, so that needs to be done um, even before you, you say you give O, you know, to any A person or B person, you know, so that's one myth I think I should hit on because that's, you know, yes. a common knowledge. The other one is that some people feel that oh, having this blood group makes you stronger or makes you <laughs> superior, you know. <laughs> so A blood group is not superior to B, it's not superior to O, it's yes. just a question of what you inherited from yeah. your parents. So I you know these things are, they're inherited. Yes. They're not, I can't make my blood group. I, I, I just get it from my parents, yes. you know. So if my dad is giving me... Um, O, and then my mom is giving me A. I'm going to be AO and that's A in phenotype okay. in terms of physical expression. Yes. You know, so because um, the A is something that is very dominant. Yes. They're going to express themselves, yes. you know. So that's, you know, that's another myth that we should be aware of. <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're not superior <laughs> to each other on the basis of blood group, you know. <laughs> it doesn't make nice. you an odogu. <laughs> oh, an achalugu. Right, achalugu. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for that yeah. clarification. Now, talking about when people make health or wellness decisions, should people consider their blood group? Absolutely. It's it's very basic as very, part very of basic. compatibility testing. Yes. Um, it doesn't mean that you, you can't have that conjugal rights or union, but it's important to know, especially it's bearing on pregnancy. Hmm. Um, and childbirth. So if a husband is resource positive, for instance, and the unborn child inherits that gene, and so you have a resource positive um, baby in the womb, yes. um, and the mom is negative, that creates a setting. So that knowledge is important, you know, um, 
you know, in terms of reproduct reproductive health decisions and, mm. and trying to manage um, pregnancy outcomes. So it's good and it's part of those um, compatibility testing that we encourage to do, um, blood groups, genotype, um, and things like that. So um, it's important. It's very relevant. Thank you very much, Dr. Dewing. Yeah. Another yet insightful journey. You've heard that no blood group is superior to the other. That place really cracks <laughs> me up because I don't know, yeah. a lot of people just see opportunities to, to you feel know, claim better yes feel. <laughs> about themselves. Right. Okay, <laughs> so we have um, come to the end of this episode. Do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Sin Lab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. Stick around, we're just getting started. <laughs>